On today's show, Cam Whitmore's Houston Rockets season in review, expectations coming into his rookie year, how he progressed and eventually cracked the Rockets rotation in just a year one growth and questions that we still have for him, as well as one game, one play and one number from his campaign, as well as his overall season grade. It's all coming up on today's Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control Houston. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along wherever you listen to your podcasts, including YouTube. Just search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I want your thoughts on Cam Whitmore's season in the YouTube comments. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And as always, Thank you so much for making Locked on Rockets part of your day every single day, whether it's on your way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym. Thank you for being an everydayer. Joining us now is your weekly co-host, NBA draft enthusiast and diehard Houston Rockets fan, Madison Moore. You can track down on Twitter at MadmanLeaks. Here for yet another in our season review series. Today's show, we're tackling Cam Whitmore, who had, I, I think we can probably both agree on this, Madison, a really electric season as a rookie for the Rockets. A little bit of a slow start, right? The, the Rockets slow played his development a little bit. Brought him down or sent him down to the RGV Vipers, let him get some time down there. Uh, a lot of time and work behind the scenes to get him up to speed before really kind of launching him into the rotation, almost by necessity at one point in the season due to so many injuries kind of stacking up for the Rockets and different guys underperforming, different guys not in the rotation, all that stuff. Um, but I think we can go back to like Summer League and just think about like the, the, post-draft tape on Cam Whitmore. And we know that this guy was going to be a bucket the moment he stepped on an NBA court, and that's exactly what he was. Yeah, I think Cam Whitmore definitely exceeded expectations this year, especially in a team with um, with goals of winning and winning at a high level and actually trying to make a playoffs the playoffs this year for him to not only break into this rotation, but effectively become this team's six man and really generate a lot of offense off the bench. Something this team desperately really needed all season. I think Cam came and found a niche in this offense and grew within it and really gave the team uh, kind of this, this change of pace, change of burst, off the bench that they desperately needed. And I, I think that really helped the flow of this game, especially when we could really struggle for offense in the second unit. Seeing the way that he was able to impact games so quickly right out of the gate. First off, I am really glad that they were able to slow play his development a little bit, mm -hmm. let him spend some time with the Vipers, really kind of refine. Because, I mean, he came in, he was really raw. Like, you could mm -hmm. see all the talent there, but he was really raw. Some of his, you know, just court awareness, both on offense and defense, especially um, understanding, you know, where to be, how to rotate, little mm -hmm. communication things that they really were able to hone in on, um, you know, behind the scenes and through practice time and all that. So they didn't just dump him in the deep end of the pool, right? They got him up to speed. And then we saw, you know, just how effective he could be as a scorer. I mean, right out of the gate. I mean, I was blown away by how easy he made it look, right? Like you could see, first off, he's got the NBA ready body right now. Guys just bounce off of him when he drives to the bucket. And then we've talked about this throughout the season, but Cam has what we like to call functional athleticism. Like this dude knows how to use his hops, knows how to use his muscle and his size to bully his way to the rim, around the rim, above the rim. Just if it involves the rim and Cam Whitmore, it's going to be a bad time for the opposing team. Yeah, no, nah, I think uh, I think his body is one of his biggest assets. He really understood his body control and how to, like you said, functionality, how to um, how to make it effective day one in the NBA, which is very rare for a rookie. But not just that, his shot making and finishing at the rim, I think, was kind of superb. Uh, it is very impressive for Cam Whitmore to step in year one and shoot thirty six percent from three. Um, I thought. Like you said, you alluded to earlier, his defense was, uh, especially his defensive rotations were very, very spotty early, but the Rockets took their time, developed him behind the scenes in the G League, got him up to speed because the NBA game can be so fast. It's really hard for guys to be able to anticipate what's next. But 
the Rockets now have a developmental crew in staff, uh, in staff in place where they were able to effectively um, teach Cam Whitmore the game over the course of the season. And we see his, we saw his rotations, which was his weakest part of his game, get better and better over the course of the season where we kind of didn't notice it, him making those mistakes when he was making those, you know, three or four mistakes of those, uh, in a quarter, right? Rotational mistakes. But we, we rarely seen them when it came to uh, March and April at the end of the season. Season. I think Cam Whitmore's growth over the course of the season, for him to step in and immediately be able to translate the shot making, I think all the all Rockets play, uh, fans can really appreciate that as we watch a young up and coming scorer really struggle to translate once once he first gets on the floor. So we, I think we understand how important and how special it is for him to be able to immediately translate that type of offense, and I think. If Cam Whitmore was on this team two years ago or if this team had different goals, he would have been starting and we probably could have seen a much, much more uh, stats driven Cam Whitmore. But because he's being developed in the context of winning, I think that will bode well for his development. And I expect Cam Whitmore to be, if not an all star, a superstar in the future. Yeah, we've we've heard a lot of, you know, Ime Odoka talking about players having to unlearn some bad habits and whatnot. Yeah. And this is, you know, one of the issues that you have for, you know, Shingun and Jalen, who spent two years with Silas and then Jabari and Tari with their rookie seasons, you know, in, in a, you know, just in a rough situation overall. Um Cam Whitmore and Amin Thompson benefit so greatly from coming into a situation where the culture was completely 180 from what it was for the last few years. Um, a winning environment, structure, um, game plan discipline like just I, I can go on and on and on about all the different things that they had working towards their development where again you're not digging yourself into a bit of a hole to start a player's career um but seeing how quickly the offense was able to translate was was definitely exciting i think uh, arguably i might be even more excited about just his presence as a defender by the end of the season because mm -hmm. there was just we saw throughout the year there were moments where he was able to lock guys up you know, when he's playing man to man, you know, just one on one defense because he's got the NBA ready body right now. He's got good instincts. Mm -hmm. um, but then we saw as the season progressed, his ability to be more of that kind of off ball, like help or like playing mm -hmm. passing lanes and really yeah, using that, that to his advantage, right? Shooting the gap, getting a steal, and then boom, he's off to the races in transition. And, you know, a transition battle with Cam Whitmore is one I like the Rockets' chances in mm -hmm. every single time down the floor. So, uh, defensively to get from where he was defensively, which was kind of really rough around the edges um, to where he was at the end of the season does again, speak volumes about the coaching staff that the Rockets have now, their developmental acumen and being able to get a, a real keep in mind, a very young rookie like Cam Whitmore, right? Mm -hmm. Amin Thompson, a bit of an older rookie. Cam Whitmore is still a baby. Like to get a player like that on the same page, communication wise, defensively as the rest of this team that was able to win, you know, 41 games and play 500 basketball is just another testament again to how good the coaching staff has been this past season. But, Coming up, we want to get into some areas of growth we'd like to see for Cam Whitmore, as well as questions that we still have for him moving forward, as well as we're going to get to our one game, one play, one number for Cam Whitmore's season. We're going to get there in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off of our chest, big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important to let that stuff out, especially to someone who's unbiased when it comes to your life. Look, I've done therapy in the past and I found it to be an incredibly cathartic experience to really kind of work through some of the issues that I had going on in my life. And honestly, it could be something, it could be a disagreement with a coworker. It could be something that you got into an argument or something with a close friend or a loved one, but having somebody to walk you through some of the emotions that you're feeling or some of the things that you've got going on in your life can be really, really productive. And therapy can be different for everyone. And honestly, most of us have bigger problems than what's going on with our favorite sports team. And it's important to get those things off your chest every once in a while. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on MBA. 
and continuing on here at Locked On Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. All right, Madison, let's get into as exciting as Cam Whitmore's rookie season was. I think we could both pretty safely pick out a few areas of his game that we'd like to see him really grow and improve on this offseason coming back into into next season, hopefully seeing him level up from year one to year two. So start us off. What's one area of growth that you're really looking forward to in Cam Whitmore's game? Yeah, uh, I think the one area of growth I'd really like to see Cam Whitmore is to continue to add to his playmaking, continue to add to his on-ball creation, um, and not just be a guy who can get buckets for himself, but a guy who can generate uh, plays for his teammates off his incredible scoring acumen. I think that is a thing that MA has made uh, very uh, made a big point to Cam over the course of this season. He's, he came in, you know, he's one of those guys that if there's not a shot that he doesn't like, right? It, it, he always feels like he can make it, and sometimes he really does make those incredible shots. He's a, he's a shot maker. That's what he does. But when it, when it comes to basketball, this is a team sport, and it's about leveraging that inc- incredible shot making to get your team easy points and get the your whole entire team involved. And I think that's Cam's next step that I would like to him like to see from him. I like to him to lead a, a second unit and not just scoring, but also playmaking, making the right reads. And I and I really love Cam's attitude because at the second half of the season, after he came back from injury, there was a real attention to detail for making the easy pass and swinging the ball and not just taking every quick shot that he that he uh, got that we seen earlier from the season. Although he had success doing that, it's about development. It's about getting guys involved. It's about adding to your game. And so I think that's a big area that Cam, I think, is already taking coaching from Udoka, and that's a really good sign to see. And I expect him to get in the gym and be able to make those easy reads, which I do think I've seen flashes. Even though Cam doesn't have a lot of assists on the stat sheet, they, there are some incredible whip passes in his repertoire, not just from the Rockets past season, but in college as well. So he can make all those passes. He does have the vision and the talent to do so. Now it's just about doing it more consistently. There's a reason that of the core six, you might be able to make an argument that Cam Whitmore has the greatest chance at becoming a true blue like superstar superstar yes. in the NBA because you you put that blend of the the physicals that he's got the athleticism the na- innate natural scoring ability the fact that he is really a bucket um combine that with his work ethic his new atten- his his attention to detail everything that he's worked on this past season um to build on your point right making the easy passes making the right reads that's always something that comes hopefully with time for these younger players as they adjust to the nba speed and game and um it's still even an adjustment right you know Jalen and Shingu just finished year three, both of them, and they're still adjusting and understanding how to read and how to make the right passes and leveraging their scoring gravity as they're getting used to and accustomed to these constant double teams and whatnot. What do I do in certain situations? Um, and as you get more and more of those reps, it becomes easier and easier and easier. For Cam, I think the the uh, my point and my area of growth for him is going to kind of, you know, uh, accent yours beautifully here because I think mm-hmm. he's got to work on his handling. Yep. Um, I think that right now Cam is still incredibly effective because he can attack off the cat. He can be a play an elite play finisher, right? He can either just, you know, knock down open shots when given them or even contested threes. He's got great range, great consistency from behind the arc, but then he's lethal attacking off the catch, right? You have to close out on him. You have to treat him as a lethal shooter. So then he's able to use that, that, you know, explosive first step that, athleticism you know that's off the charts and get to wherever he wants to on the floor and then he's got the physicality the build to finish through contact to have these strong drives to the rim all of that but what we haven't seen much of from cam whitmore this past season um is his ability to you know kind of create off the dribble i guess right to generate his own look to start the offense and i do think that we saw we saw like a handful of like cam whitmore like pick and roll action like at the very (laughs) very very tail end of the season and it was such an alien thing to see right where you're just like oh man we really haven't seen much of this at all and you could tell that it was a little clunky at times right i think for cam if he can get that handle to a respectable level and really put some control on it get it you know tighten it up a little bit he doesn't ever have to have you know, a super flashy, like Kyrie esque handle Mm -hmm. to be effective with, with all the, you know, physical gifts that he already has, but just a little bit, right? Like a a few points in that handle slider. And I think that allows him to take a step with his playmaking because it'll open up his creation, you know, ability. Um, 
And then on top of that, it just makes him that much more of a lethal scorer too. Yeah, no, he needs, he definitely needs to add some floor general skills. Like we're, we're not asking him to add a, you know, crossovers or, you know, a, a crossover package. He just needs to be able to get to spots in the, in the, uh, in the teeth of the defense where he, his gravity forces uh, defenders to really attack him Cause, and cause then right make now, plays kinda, out of that. He, he can kind of just one speed barrel right now. Yeah. Right? Like, mm-hmm. like he's, you know, he tucks that shoulder down and he's gone and he can get there, <laughs> but sometimes it's a little sloppy. Sometimes he's trying to finish it. Like he could honestly make his life a little bit easier if he yeah. had a couple counters to get to, because then it's you know quick yeah. one two dribble, boom, change of direction, spin move back towards the you know center of the lane, and then he's got the explosiveness to then you know lift off two legs and he's right there at the rim. So he might be able to unlock a little bit more for his own offensive potential with a little bit more of that handles package. Yeah, for sure, he definitely needs to add that and that package along with the power. I think really translates to uh, NBA playoffs. I think I really worry about Jalen and his strength, right? But Jalen is able to play make out of what we've seen a leap in Jalen's playmaking this season. And a lot of people call for Cam Whitmer. He shot the ball so well this year. They call for him to maybe start over Jalen when he was struggling. But the one thing that Cam didn't have that Jalen had is Jalen was still able to weaponize his gravity. Teams still respected him and guarded him. And Jalen was still able to generate offense and hockey assists off of his gravity, something that Cam has not learned yet. And for, and for you to have an effective offense or offense to actually run, Cam has to add those skills. And that's what we're talking about. But I think those things are in the cards for him. I mean, I think he really needs to look at uh, the playoffs this year. I think the, uh, Donovan Mitchell, the way Donovan Mitchell gets to his spots in the paint, the way he forces the issue downhill, I think could be very similar how physical he was offensively in the, in just that game seven when he's saying not only just scoring but also playmaking and making an extra pass for his team, using his energy to get involved in different ways. I think I think once Cam understands the game from that lens, there's not going to be many guys who can stop him. You know what I mean? So that, that's what, I, what we're really looking for for Cam. And that type of stuff, if he continues to build on his defense, Cam can finish as a starter by the end of the season because there will be spots up for grabs if he starts to reach into that all-star bag, which I, I definitely believe is a very realistic out, outcome for Cam. I think it's extremely hard to be a productive player as a rookie on a on a team uh that's that's winning games, right? We were a five hundred team, we we're a good team. And he was a very productive player. That should not we should not look past that. There's some real upside with this guy and he could be something very special for this Rocket scene. I, I think honestly, and I don't even think this is like a ballsy take or anything, I think his like floor level scenario is a Jalen Brown type. Man. Like I think so too. Because think about it, Jalen Brown has you know I, obviously it, it's a little overblown the whole he can't go left thing, but uh, <laughs> you know it, it, the you know Jalen Brown has developed such an elite all around game, and and when I see Cam, when I see the way he scores, kind of some of the touches that he gets within the Rockets' offense right now, it, it feels a lot like Jalen Brown. And mm-hmm. if Cam's handle is is even right now on the same level as Jalen Brown, then I think that's like a, a decent floor level comp. And then you start ex, you start exploring the ideas of man, if Cam can really add to his you know handles package a little bit, and then suddenly we're talking you know much different scenarios of what his true ceiling is because a better handle will increase his playmaking ability, his ability to generate his own shots as well as for teammates, all of that. Right? It just kind of grows exponentially from that point but uh any questions that you have on your mind right now madison when it comes to cam anything that you're just has been lingering on your mind since the end of the season yeah so i think the only real question i have with cam is how realistic is it for cam to reach his ceiling with all the young players ahead of them in the lineup Right. And at similar positions, not just young players, but also veteran players like Dylan Brooks. Right. There's a lot of wing players, a lot of good young players like Tari Eason on this team. And is, you know, how realistic are will we be able to give him the reps uh, to really fast track his development like and star to, star level reps? Yes. Right. Star level reps. Right. When will he be able to receive those? What does that look like? And what type of hard decisions does this team have to make if if Cam uh, if Cam and some other player both take leaps, right? And, you know, what type of hard decisions does this team have to make? And I I, I really am um, 
interested and kind of intrigued by how the Rockets will handle that. Because I think there's some, there's, there's a real possibility that those things can happen where Cam is just so, so, so damn good. You just can't keep him all on the bench. You know what I mean? And, and I, I, I really, I really am wondering if the Rockets will be, be able to up his primary reps to get him the reps he needs to develop those, that type of playmaking and continue to develop him as a star. Yeah, no, that's that's actually a really fantastic point. I do think that there's something to be said for, you know, if you can develop him, even if he's get, still getting 20 to 25 minutes a night, whatever, you can develop into into one of the most, you know, deadly sixth men in the NBA or whatever, almost a la a, you know, a James Harden with OKC type, you know, stylistically different, but just kind of a, a role that just grows to that, you know, ser- you know, a really important size to where he might be closing certain games, whatever, um, even though he's the quote unquote sixth man. Uh And even if they're not able to scale him all the way up to 30, 35 minutes a night of production, I think at that point they would probably have a really good idea of who they think he is and what they could scale him up to if they did give him a starting position or starters level reps or whatever. And that might be the point where you're like, okay, like, you know, summer 2025, you know, a hard decisions being made between, you know, Jalen and Cam or, uh, you know, Cam and Amen or, you know, Cam and Jabari. I don't know. Like, which which yeah. of the core six do you suddenly have to prioritize their development of? Because, mm-hmm. like, okay, this guy is on the fast track to be a star. So now we've got to start giving him those star mm-hmm. level reps. Alper and Shingun got that treatment this year, right? Like, Shingun played like a star and he became the team's number one option. He became. At, all the offensive touches were rolling through him. He was the number one through three guy on opposing team scouting reports. He got the star level treatment and the star level reps this season. And then when he went down, Jalen Green took on those extra reps and he was able to, you know, do a lot with them in that month of March specifically. Uh, coming up, we're going to get into our one game, one play, one number for Cam Whitmore's season, as well as our overall season grade. We're going to get there in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by DoorDash. This Mother's Day, get something thoughtful for mom on DoorDash. Surprise her from wherever you are with fresh bouquets, the latest in tech, gift cards, self-care treats, and so much more to make her day that much better. Does mom maybe have a bit of a sweet tooth? Is she a tech enthusiast, a beauty connoisseur, or is she outdoorsy? No matter what she's into, you can make her smile with a fruit or flower bouquet, makeup, tech gear, workout wear, and so much more on DoorDash. Get all of your Mother's Day gifts all in one place and get 50% off of your next order up to $15. When you spend $15 or more on your next flower, convenience grocery or retail order now on DoorDash with code locked on MBA. That's locked on MBA. Order using DoorDash today. Terms apply. And final segment here at Locked On Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. All right, it's that time in our review episode. Madison, we've got one game. We've each got one game, one play, and one number from Cam Whitmore's season. So Let's go ahead and I will we'll, I'll let you I'll let you drive the bus here for a second. First sure. off, do you want to go in the same order we go in, game play number, or do you want to mix it up a little bit and change up what direction we go in? Uh let's go what we normally do. All right, so game order. so game first. All right, so hit us with your game then. Okay. The Brooklyn, I think it was 106-104 loss uh January 27th is my game. Okay? okay? If you at surface level just look at Cam's uh, stats, 19, 9, 1, and 1, it's a pretty good game, pretty solid. Efficiency wasn't amazing. It was okay. But what was special about this game to me and what stood out about this game is the Rockets were getting blown out the entire game. They were getting dog walked in this game. And Cam started the fourth quarter. And he dropped 10 points in the fourth quarter to bring the Rockets back into this game. He almost became, it was, it was the first time that I seen the Rockets actively looking for Cam to take shots. They, he, he hit these two incredible threes. He got out in transition, got a duck. And he also had a play in the lane where he actually was getting where we were running the dribble handoffs to get Cam the ball. We, we, we drew up a, a pick and pop to get Cam the ball. The team was invested in getting him the ball because he was hot and he scored 10 of his points and really drug us into a single digit dogfight game into the fourth quarter. And I honestly believe we lost that game because we went away from Cam in the last couple minutes. Um, so that was one of, that was one of my favorite games because it actually showed 
what Cam would look like as a lead guy for this offense, as a, as as the primary guy who goes and gets buckets. And I thought Cam did an excellent job. Um, and to me, I, I really felt that superstar come out of him in that quarter. I love that pick. And I, I think that being able to shout out the uh, the 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 ten other the ten points at the top of the quarter that's a good that's a good recall. Um, <laughs> I, I, I I love that pick. I I was torn between two, and for very similar reasons though. Um, mm-hmm. First game that Cam actually got like some significant burn um, was against the the Dallas Mavericks um, all the way back in December. And if you remember, there was that one play. Uh, he almost hit his head on the backboard when yeah, he went up for the lob, awesome. and he had to duck under the backboard. That was insane. I think that game, it, it was a toss-up between that game and uh, his career high night against the uh, the Raptors, where the Rockets completely yeah. blew out the Raptors. Um, both for very similar reasons, but just the heart of it is, in both of those games, right? The first real look at Cam Whitmore in an NBA game against the Mavericks. And then again, in that game against the the Raptors, similar feeling here of just this guy is what like an alpha scoring prospect Mm -hmm. is, you know? And unfortunately, like we saw some insane flashes from Jalen, but like you said earlier, you know, there is a worry about Jalen's like size, right? Like, can he deal with some of the physicality of, you know, when things do get tougher in the playoffs, right? When the refs start swallowing their whistles, you know, we've seen contact be a bit of an issue at times for Jalen through his career. Whereas cam, that's just not the issue against the Mavs in that very first game where he got like legitimate run. He was only one of six from downtown, but he finished the game with 14 points because Mm -hmm. he was five of six inside the arc. Like (laughs) the dude was a bulldozer and he was just knocking guys down left and right. He was finishing above the rim. And we knew that the shot was like good enough. Like I wasn't worried about the shot at that point. And then that Raptors game was where it was like, everything kind of came together, right? Rock, Rockets were just completely dumpstering the Raptors. Cam was a huge part of that. He led the team in scoring uh, with 25 that night, his career high. So those uh, that's a toss up for me. But both those games kind of have the same sentiment is just just like this is what an elite scoring prospect is. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good picks. So, um, all right. I'm very curious your one play from from Cam season, because this goes back to an episode that we did way back when during the season. So let, let, let's see. You, you hit me with what you got. Oh, no, I can't remember that. But it's okay. I, I do have a play. It is, it's a highlight play, but it is actually one of the most impressive plays I've seen. Okay. It was very Dwayne Wade-esque. Um, so Cam Whitmore is off a tip, gets a loose ball off, off a tip, uh, tip off. Um, I think it was a jump ball and it was tipped off. So he's in transition and fast break against the New Orleans Pelicans. And he takes on three defenders in this in this fast break on the three defenders he drives hard down the lane the left side of the court he pound dribbles on the left once he gets to the basket right and he's almost he's he's caught between two defenders he spins off both defenders into a drop step like he's a seven foot center and then he rises up and dunks on uh, 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 one of the forwards. Uh, what is this guy, This guy's name? I can't remember his name. But he ducks on him, the third guy, right? And it's just, and it's a it's a power play. It is a postman's move. I can't hear you. Oh man! I wow! I was mean. This this was against who again? The Pelicans. The Pelicans. The Pelicans. Yeah, yeah. It was Larry Nance is who he ducked on or ducked around basically because Larry Nance didn't. He, he made a business decision, but he was in the play. So okay, but, okay. But yeah, no, it, it it was a it was a spin into as, a as drop de- step. As you were describing, I was thinking of a different play where Cam had brought the whole had brought the ball up the court, but he had spun through two guys, and it was kind of sloppy. Though it was a transition play, it wasn't. So I, yeah. I, I was getting this, this is a transition play too, though. So so I don't know, maybe uh, maybe but he did. Elegant. It wasn't sloppy though. Okay, it wasn't okay. sloppy. I mean, you could tell he did it because you know that was really his best option, okay. and it, he really felt it. So, but he set them up, and it wasn't sloppy. It was clean, and, and the drop step into a power two hand dunk it was it was and he got some real lift like he was like he was Clint Capella so like like okay. a, a real center and and that was just very impressive for a guy of his size to be able to play with so much power and force in the transition and that's a really big part of Cam's game is his his ability to get out and run in transition and just be unstoppable I think his mix of athleticism and power is probably the best we've seen 
uh, you know, weaponized in transition probably since LeBron James, honestly. Like, I, I don't know another guy. Better than come. Ant? So, Ant, to me, Ant has power, but he doesn't use it as often as Cam. You know what I mean? He he, he He's more calculated in what he does, and he, he flashes it at times. Okay. But sometimes he just really is hitting guys in the chest, like a bowling ball. You know what I mean? And guys are just bouncing off. And for this to be his rookie year to be doing that type of stuff, I think it's really impressive. Not to just, you know, I, I, I just think the way Ant uses his power is different. And I think the way Cam uses it is a lot more put my shoulder into your chest and get you off me. Similar to LeBron. I, I, th- I think Cam relies on his power a little bit more and Ant yeah. relies on it less, even though they both have it. And even though mm-hmm. similar build, similar physique, all that, you can make those arguments across the board. Um, yeah. I think that, I think that tracks play style. a little bit more. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's just play style. Yeah. I'm with that. Um, okay. I'm glad you didn't take this one. So I'm, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm glad we get to run this one back because I got to give I got to give you full credit here, but it was from a game earlier this season where it was against the bulls and I, and it was uh cam's first time playing against DeMar DeRozan and yeah. early in the game, cam fell for a DeRozan pump fake <laughs> and sent him to the free throw line. You could tell looking at the camera, he was pissed off at himself rest of the game didn't fall for a single DeRozan <laughs> pump fake. You pointed this out, and I made sure to talk about it when we did the recap show, but that stood out in a big way, right? Talking about, like, in segment one, the attention to detail that Cam has, his work ethic, and how hard he has worked to, you know, get up to speed from a mental capacity, from a basketball IQ perspective at the NBA level, right? Processing the game, understanding where to be, how to rotate, all the little things. And that one stood out in such a big way because this is a kid who... Fool me once, shame on me, right? Fool mm-hmm. me twice, shame on you. So it was one of those where just seeing that and seeing it pointed out like the way you did, I was like, oh, we've got to bring this back up. So I'm going to go with that as the one play because Cam is a guy, you teach him something and it sticks. And that's mm-hmm. an important thing in a player's development. Yeah, no, that's a really good one, dog. I, I, you know, but I it's, couldn't it's, remember. It's your really good one. So. Yeah, I know, but that's what I'm saying. I There were some impactful things that come through the season, and then sometimes you, like, can immediately recall back yeah. to, and that was one of the ones I, I missed this time. <laughs> like, I remember when, when I was doing my games, I knew the game that I was looking for. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I remember how it felt watching it, and I, I'm mad I missed the uh, good one. But I'm glad you brought it up. That's a pretty good one. Uh, for sure, for sure. All right, um, we got our last one here. We've got our number from the season, and then we'll get to our season grade. So, Madison, give me a number from Cam Whitmore's season that stood out to you, and then explain it. But let me see if I can guess it first. Okay, okay. You want to guess it? Oh, what's your number? Okay. Yeah, yeah. 26.3. 26.3. Oh. Oh, 26.3. What is this? Um, Rebounding percentage? No, that's okay. a good, that's a, that's a good guess. I, I need to give it. All right, I don't know what twenty. I, that was my okay, that was okay. gonna be my best guess. All right, give me what. Give, right. What's twenty six point three? So I typically don't like to do this, but I do think it's relevant for Cam Whitmore. That is his per forty minute point average. If Cam Whitmore was to to, to uh, average forty minutes a game, he would have averaged twenty six point three points. 8.2 rebounds and 1.5 assists. Now the assists ain't nothing to really bulk at, but I bring those numbers up. I bring those numbers up and I know these things can be kind of, uh, you know, kind of conflated and uh, I don't really like to use them, but I think they're relevant here because Cam Whitmore is a rookie and typically a rookie of his stature. If he was on a bad team where he was able to ch- kind of get as many shots up as he wanted and play as many minutes as he needed, I think this is what we could have seen from a Cam Whitmore rookie year that where he really got to play the entire he, season. He would have been in really like the Brandon Miller role, right? Where like yes, he would have exactly. been putting up numbers, bad exactly. team, like looking mm-hmm. really good, clear cut third, you know, third yes. behind behind Wimby and Chet since they were since it's Wimby and since it's Chet in a winning situation. But yeah, okay, yeah, and 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 that's what I that, and that's what I'm trying to get at. I, I think that Cam could have easily been a 20 point per game scorer if he played 36 to 40 minutes last last year, and I think these these per 36s i mean this per 40 is actually realistic for cam and where he is in his career and actually is a kind of appearance of the future and i and i think 8.2 rebounds is a really good stat because cam was very very strong rebounder this year 
Okay, I love it. I love it. Um, the only thing, the, I, I, I take issue with the fact that you didn't go with Per 36 numbers, seeing as how his nickname was literally Per 36 on the broadcast because they constantly talk about his Per 36 numbers <laughs> and how off the charts they were. So going with Per 40 just to make it look a little, no, nah, it's, it's cool. I like that one. Um, all right, my one number for Cam, uh, 13. Can you guess what 13 is? 13 20-point games? No. That would have been good. Um, is it have to, hold on. Does it have to do with assists? It does. Mm. 13 games where he had under assist. Nope. 13 games where he had over two assists? No. no I, okay, okay. I, I give up. I give up. Yeah. You know, it was like, I'm going to use all three of my guesses. No. <laughs> right. Here we go. He's like, hit. Madison's about to be like, can I phone a friend? Like, <laughs> all right. Um, 13 assists over his last three games, 20 assists across his first 44 games. So Cam Whitmore over his last three games had 13 total assists. Uh, I believe it was four, then five and five, or sorry, I apologize. Four, four, then five. Um, uh, so his career high in assists, final game of the season. And I think it's important, especially as we go back to write the conversations about his growth as a ball handler, as a playmaker. Um, he did show a lot of playmaking chops throughout the season, right? These little moments, these little passes, some hockey assists here and there, um, or just passes that didn't get converted on. But I think over those last handful of games, you really started to see, oh, this is what Cam Whitmore can look like when he is, you know, a number one option, when he is, when the offense is running through him, when he's running the show, when he's playmaking for others, what this could actually look like. And he very much has the makings of like a, like a 25, eight and six kind of player. Um, so I had to go with the assists and I was yeah, cheesing when we were talking about the passing or I was like, I was like, Ooh, I'm going to get yeah. him with this assist number later on. <laughs> no, it's crazy because I was trying to fit that in because his assist totals went up to 1.8 in um, April. He averaged about 1.8 assists, but that's just not, you know, it don't really pop at you. But when you look at the rest of the season, he averaged like 0 0.2, 0 0.4 a month. You know what I mean? So it was just like, that actually was meaningful for Cam Whitmore. It just, it just didn't, pop it didn't have the allure but i'm glad you found the one that did pop that's pretty good all right that brings us to our season grade for cam whitmore now we do want to know your season grades for cam whitmore let us know in the youtube comments but madison what you got for cam this year man i think i, I think i gotta give him an a a minus i think we gotta give cam whitmore an a minus because when you cut when you consider expectations we expected cam to not really be able to crack this rotation um and if he did very sparsely right but not only did cam become an active part of this rotation but there were calls for cam to start throughout the season there were he became actually a. uh, uh a much needed member of for scoring on the off this bench when there were stretches that the Rockets really, really struggled to score. And he beat out a lot of veteran wings on this team and really solidified himself by the end of the year when we when we got healthy. Cam Whitmore was the first guy off the bench. So I, I, I have to give him an A for that. And he flashed everything that we kind of wanted to see from from him. For me, as a guy who loves to draft and calls himself a like you know pseudo evaluator, I was really worried about Cam's uh, lack of uh, lack of attention to to making the guys around him better. It, it seemed like a choice because the flashes were there. I could see he had the talent. It just seemed like a choice that he wasn't doing doing so, and that really brought into question if if he, if he was really taking coaching. And, but this year, seeing Udoka really get to him and seeing him put the effort into finding his teammates and grow that over the course of the season really encouraged me. And I'm a, a big fan of Cam Whitmore, and I think he'll be a star in this league. So I have to give him my A. I think I'm right there with you on the A, honestly. And it kind of feels, it, it's it's always a little tough because when we do these reviews, it's always like, it feels like a cop out to pick the same grade. But like, how can you not with his yeah. year, right? Like, I remember even having conversations with uh, with his trainer, uh, Aaron Miller, kind of before the season, just talking about like, you know, and I remember thinking, talking to him about it, saying, I think there's a legit chance that he could crack into the rotation, right? As 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 unlikely as that sometimes is, or usually is, I should say, with a rookie uh, in a situation where they want to be winning games, I was like, no, there's 
there's a real possibility, right? Like the talent's there. And if he can get it figured out, then like the moment we started seeing him get those bench minutes, I was like, oh yeah, like he's going to have a spot in this rotation by the end of the year. Um, Cause Emi Odoka rewards players that play well, right. That put in the work. And that's the thing about Cam is he is an absolute workhorse, man. Like the amount of time that he spends in the gym, looking over film, trying to get better is second to none. So he's got all of the, like natural innate abilities, the get the physical gifts, the talent, the skill, but then he's got like that drive, right? That mental makeup of wanting to be great. And he's got that massive chip on his shoulder from falling all the way to, you know, the 20th pick in the draft when he thought he was going, you know, top five at a minimum through most of the pre-draft process. So yeah, I think easy a for Cam Whitmore this past season. And the, the future is super bright with him. Incredibly high ceiling. Uh, I, I, I don't want to go like who's the most like untouchable of the Rockets young core, but Cam is like that one piece. I'm like, I, I hope and pray the Rockets don't do something stupid with him. Hold on to him for at least three or four years, right? Give him time to grow, cultivate that talent and see what he can ultimately become here in Houston. On that note, if you're watching on YouTube, give us your thoughts in the YouTube comments. Drop your season grade for Cam Whitmore and your thoughts on anything else we talked about. Madison, you know the drill. Let everybody know where to track you down at. You can find me at, at Madman Leaks on X or Twitter. I love to talk Rockets basketball. That's going to do it for another edition of Locked on Rockets. As always, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcast or on YouTube. Just search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening via Apple Podcasts, a five-star review helps us out a ton. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Mm-hmm.